Hello everyone, I'm Koyun and today we are actually going to learn the chemical composition in a cell, which is from 4 chapter 4. So they actually categorize into five of them, water, carbohydrate, protein, lipid, and nucleic acid. So before I enter this water topic, I'm going to let you see an overview of what you actually learn in general. So for water, we actually learn the characteristic of them three characteristics, what makes it so different and makes it have its very useful function. Besides that, we also learn this carbohydrate whereby the monomer is called monosaccharide, then it branch out into the examples of them and got disaccharide also and polysaccharide, which is a polymer. Then we also learn the protein whereby amino acid they join together to form a long chain of amino acid, which is called a polypeptide. And we also learn about the lipid, got fat, wax, phospholipid, and steroid. And there are two differences between the saturated, I mean, there are differences between these two, saturated fat and unsaturated fat. Last but not least is our nucleic acid, can be RNA or your DNA. So for this nucleic acid, the monomer is called nucleotide. So this is how nucleotide looks like. It has a phosphate group, a pencil sugar, and a nitrogenous base. Okay, now let's learn on the properties of water. So first property is that water is polar. So you might be wondering, what does polar means? Oh, did you? I know. Polar is because polar bears... Uh, able to stand on top, float on top, I mean stand on top of the ice. That's why the ice, I mean the ice is made out of water. So yeah, water is polar. No, nonsense. Lah. Water is polar. Polar another, it's not because of polar bear. It doesn't relate to polar bear, okay? But the reason why it's called polar is because in chemistry, if we learn in detail, lah, there is actually two when um when there's when an atom form covalent bond with another atom um there's a differences between them it can lead to a non-polar property or a polar property so if the atom you can see like chlorine atom Chlorine atom from covalent bond means they have a sharing of electron lah, because they want to achieve a stable of that electron arrangement. Yeah, you can see now they got eight electrons since they share. Each of them share one, that's why they can achieve it, the stable electron arrangement. Each of them, I mean each each atom is the same atom, chlorine atom, chlorine atom. Both of them have the same electronegativity. What is electronegativity? Electronegativity is basically the ability of an atom to attract electron to become a negatively charged ion. But these two also look it at the same group, same uh, same group, same period, and they have the same electronegativity since they form covalent bond, they share electron between the same atom. So the sharing of electron the distribution of electrons between them are the same. So they do not have a partial positive charge or partial negative charge. They are non-polar. That's the reason why they are called non-polar. So what about something is called a polar? So why are there polar? Why is water polar? So let's take a look at this drawing example. H2O. Okay, oxygen itself, it has six electrons, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. It still needs two more electrons to achieve a stable. So it has to share electron with this hydrogen because hydrogen only has one electron. But okay, you can see there is a sharing electron between different atoms. Different atoms, they have different electronegativity right now. So, who have a higher electronegativity? Oxygen atom has a higher electronegativity. It's more electronegative. Neg 
electronegativity. Okay, for high electronegativity atom, we got learn is nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, basically. So one of them is oxygen. Okay, what happens if there is a sharing of electron between a more electronegative atom? Since both of them are different atoms, because there are differences between the electronegativity. So oxygen is higher, means it pulls the electron towards them more closer. So when it pulls the electron between, so when they share the electron, when they pull the electron, the electron are more closer to the oxygen, which gives rise to this polar property of water. Because now here has a partially positive, here also partial positive, but the one that pull towards, which leads to the V, why the oxygen is partial negative. It has a partial negative region because most electrons are concentrated at the oxygen. That's why it has a partial positive part, partial positive charge. Okay, so this is the reason why the water is polar. The main reason is because there is a sharing of electron between two different atoms. These two different atoms have different electronegativity. Oxygen has a higher electronegativity. That's why the sharing of electron between oxygen and hydrogen, when they share electron, the electron that is shared is pulled towards closer towards the oxygen. So when electron distribution is different right now, more electrons towards the oxygen, this gives rise to the partial negative charge of this oxygen. And for hydrogen atom, this hydrogen, it has a partial positive. So the water in overall, it is a polar molecule. So why is it important? Because this polarity, the polarity which it will actually give rise to this property whereby the water molecule can act as a universal solvent. So why it will mix this water as a universal solvent? Because when you have a partial negative, you have a partial positive charge, you can actually interact with other molecules. So the most important one is the water molecule, whereby you can form a hydrogen bond. So how hydrogen bond actually form? So if you look at this definition of hydrogen bond, hydrogen bond is attraction between a hydrogen atom of a molecule with another electronegative atom of another molecule. So it can be nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, but for this hydrogen bond, we are going to be more specific. It is an attraction between a hydrogen atom of a water molecule with another um, oxygen atom, oxygen atom of another water molecule. So let me illustrate to you how does it look like. Okay, since this hydrogen, okay, because it's attraction between the hydrogen atom with another electronegative atom. So now let's draw another H2O. Okay. And then this hydrogen, since it has a partial positive, and then this oxygen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and this another electron, yeah, it pulled towards. So here it has a partial negative, here it also has a partial negative. So the interaction, the attraction formed between them is called as hydrogen bond. So water able to form hydrogen bond is actually very important because it gives rise to the property whereby water can act as a universal solvent. Why is it called universal solvent? Because it can dissolve a lot of solutes in it. Lah. So what are the solutes? Let's say our blood consists of blood plasma. Okay, And majority, I mean basically our blood 
not only consists of red blood cell, it has a lot of water inside. Remember that we learned, oh, we are made of a lot of water, 80% or 90%, I think, yeah, around there. Lah. So why do we have water in our blood? Okay, the reason why we have water in our blood plasma is because this water is very important. Yeah, we drink water also very important. Lah. So this water actually acts as this universal solvent to transport your other solutes. Let's say your glucose and other things like glucose, your amino acid, uh, electrolytes like sodium ions, all this. Yeah, because this water has this ability to form hydrogen bond with other solutes. This actually gives rise to this universal solvent. Why it is a universal solvent? Because it can form hydrogen bond with other solute. It able to dissolve. Because it able to form hydrogen bond, that's why it can the solute can dissolve in the water. So you pour a sugar inside the water, you are able to dissolve. Because it is a universal solvent. Why is it a universal solvent? Because it can form hydrogen bond with polar molecule like your glucose and yeah other charged uh, electrolytes for this so other than this characteristic okay because this water able to form hydrogen bond it gives rise to this cohesive force and adhesive force of this water molecule so why how do cohesive force happen cohesive force is basically what i drew just now yeah water and another water so water molecule attracted to each other like water attract to each other so let's say this hydrogen bond has if this hydrogen has a partial positive it attract to the partial negative of this oxygen okay and then what about cohesive is basically hydrogen and hydrogen Okay, they are same species together. What about adhesive? Adhesive is basically a water molecule. They interact with other things. Okay, let's say for this example, this water molecule it attracted to the cellulose lining. It able to form hydrogen bond with the cellulose lining of the xylem wall. Okay, that's this is the adhesive force. So it's actually very easy to differentiate between them. Cohesive force is hydrogen bond that is formed between water molecule. Between two water yeah, between what water molecule. And adhesive force is basically a hydrogen bond that is formed between a water molecule and another thing. Okay, another, let's say this cellulose lining of xylem wall. So it can be also when you drink using your straw, yeah, why water managed to be pulled up? Okay, because this water, I mean water able to be pulled up on, along this narrow tube. Yeah, it's because this water able to form cohesive force with other water molecule and water able to form this hydrogen bond with the the straw the wall of your straw yeah which give rise to this adhesive force so these two force actually gives rise to your capillary action so that's the reason why water can move along the narrow tube okay so basically the reason why you have cohesive and adhesive force is because water is polar and water is polar and this that allows it to form a hydrogen bond. It all because of this hydrogen bond. So you have to say thank you to the hydrogen bond also. Okay, and moving on to the next one, last property, which is a high specific heat capacity. Why water has a high specific heat capacity? Okay, um, in order for a water to change their state, okay. Uh, let's say this one, okay, oxygen, and then you form a hydrogen bond. In order for the water to change their state, 
from liquid to gaseous state. The hydrogen bond has to be broken down. Yeah. Okay. So in order to, you need heat energy to overcome. Okay. You basically need the heat energy to increase the kinetic energy between the water molecule. Other than increase the kinetic energy between them, you also have to break the hydrogen bond first. You the heat energy, you have to break the hydrogen bond first, then you can only increase the kinetic energy of the water molecule in order the water molecules to evaporate, to change state from liquid to gaseous state. But you might think it's very easy la, to break the hydrogen bond and to increase the kinetic energy. But it actually kind of hard because okay, what hydrogen bond itself is weak. But hydrogen bond together, all together, bekerja sama together, okay, in a let's say in a jar of water. So all this hydrogen bond right here, okay, you want to break them. Yeah, it's actually kind of hard. Why? It is easy to break, but they can reform easily. They can be formed between. So after you break them, they will form back again. The hydrogen bond will form back. So you the energy, because after you break the hydrogen bond, you have you can only increase the kinetic energy. But after you break the hy the hydrogen bond they can quickly reform back the hydrogen bond. That's the reason why a very high energy energy is required in order to raise temperature of water. So you might see this 4.2 kJ in order to raise 1 kg of water by 1 degree Celsius. So you got 1 kg of water. You want to raise them by 1 degree Celsius. You need 4,200 joule of energy, of heat energy. That's the reason why when you want to boil water, it takes some time to boil a water, right? Yeah, because water has a high specific heat energy, a high specific heat capacity. Why? Because it has this hydrogen bond. When they want to break the hydrogen, they have to, I mean, the heat energy is required to break the hydrogen bond before increasing the kinetic energy of the water molecule. So after you finally manage to increase the kinetic energy molecule, yes, it can the, the water molecule can change state from liquid to gas. So the heat and it takes a lot of work for a heat to heat the water for the water to change state like, because uh, not only have to increase the kinetic energy, you also have to break the hydrogen bond. And this hydrogen bond, yes, it can be easily break, but when they are all together, the hydrogen bond, once you break, it can be formed easily. So it's it takes some time like, okay, to continue to break them and in order to increase their kinetic energy for them to change state. Why is it important for water to have a high specific heat capacity? Yes, uh, it needs a high energy in order to have a small rise in temperature. Therefore, it can actually maintain the body temperature of organism. That's why, that's probably the reason why we drink water and water circulates around our body. Water consists, I mean blood consists of water la, and it's able to maintain body temperature of organism. That's why drink water is very important. La. Other than that, um, normally when you see a lake in a very cold country, you can cold climate, when you see a lake, right, you can see that the lake won't actually fully frozen. Yes, it can be fully frozen. I mean, wait, yeah, wait. Um, aquatic animals on top there is, yeah, it's fully frozen. But at the bottom there, the water is still liquid, so the the aquatic animals able to still survive lah. It also because of this hydrogen bond. 
But now we actually learn, I mean, uh, the most easiest application for you to know is basically it has high specific heat capacity. Therefore, it can maintain body temperature of the organism. So yeah, that's all for this topic for, of water. I hope you understand and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.